So, this motherboard over here is the best motherboard you can get for Intel's 12th and 13th gen if you want an ITX board. This is the Z790i ROG Strix Gaming Wi-Fi motherboard. And right now it comes roughly around $470 or something like that. Woo! It's quite expensive, it's full of features, but it's missing one massive feature. But you know what, what we're not missing? The sponsored segment of this video. Looking for a cheap way to license your windows? Check out WhoKeys through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get a 30% off. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get a 30% off. Check out WhoKeys.com in the video description below. Here's the motherboard. In here, we can see ROG Strix Hive. There is ROG FPS 2 card and accessories. So this is the little ROG FPS card. This little guy over here, it's gonna be very important thing for your motherboard. Strix Hive. That's pretty cool. This has got magnetic here as well, so, oh yeah you can attach it to something on the table or something like that. And then our accessories. User guide. That's a front panel extension cable. We've got one USB type A to type C cable, ROG Strix Hive cable. So this is for the Hive. We've got this cable over here, which is the USB 2.0 splitter. So you can get actually two USB 2.0 headers from one if you need to. Some tweezers, as some might say. The awesome ASUS Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antenna. It's a very, very nice thing. Two SATA cables, a spare M.2 um, quick release or toolless, you know, locking mechanism design thing. We have one key ring and we've got a spare a thermal pad here as well. A ton of stickers here as always. And a nice message from ROG. Resus web storage there as well. Look at this cute little thing over here, full of features. In terms of power connectors, we have one over here for the CPU, which is just 8 pin EPS power connector. And then we have the ATX power connector over here. Then next, what we can see over here are three. Uh, PWM connectors. This one is CPU fan, we have AIO pump fan and chassis fan. And as always the AIO PW fan connector runs 100% all the time but the CPU header and chassis fan can be configured through the fan curves in the BIOS or on software. Moving on this side, we can see the RAM sticks. It's dual channel, but we have one stick per channel. So you can apply or have up to 64 gigabyte uh, DIMMs here. And we have the LGA 1700 socket for the Intel CPUs. Look at that. You can put 12th gen and 13th gen CPUs in there. Both of them work completely fine. Another cool thing here is the ASUS um, holes for the um, coolers which means you can use LGA 1200 and 1700 socket mounting kits. Both of them will work completely fine just because of these um, hole differences. As you can see, there's two holes for the coolers. Moving on here, we can see a front panel type A connector here, and that is five gigabits in speed, USB 3.0. Then we have one type C front panel connector, and that is 20 gigabits in speed. So USB 3.2 Gen 2 X2 uh, port here. And then we have some interesting USB-C looking ports in here as you can see and just behind this port there this is the power button so if you short those two on the top then the PC is going to turn on and then on the bottom these two are sensor headers but these two little headers over there are actually for this little card so what you can do is slot this card in there like that boom and then we've got some extra ports as you can see here now I'm going to take the card out so we can talk about it a little bit more in detail. So on the card here then, we have two SATA parts. Then on the top there, there's two USB 2.0 headers. Then on this top side here, top right corner, we have front panel connectors. So you have your power switches, reset switches, LED and HDD lights and all sorts of things there. Then this here is PCIe Gen switch. I don't understand why we would need that, but basically when it's auto, it switches automatically between Gen 3 and Gen 4 from the motherboard 
mod but if you put it to switch one which is i think this one then it will be only gen 4 and if it's switch like two position then it's only gen 3 um which is I don't know why you would need it. I guess if you're running certain graphics cards and certain things and you want to quickly change the PCIe slot to Gen 3 or Gen 4 if it's not booting or something like that or your riser cable is Gen 3 instead of Gen 4 or something like that um, you can do that in there. Then this little header there with this little plastic in there is a CPU over voltage header which means that right now it's on default setting and if I put it on the right and the middle one I can have more voltage or more than default voltage to the CPU. It's just an overclocking feature basically and then we have another sensor header just over here and that card really goes over there like that now here we have this massive heatsink tower type of thing but underneath there there's two m.2 slots one of them is pcie gen 5 and one of them gen 4 so if you take the top cover off just undo th these screws and as you can see you'll have thermal pad on the top and the bottom i have already used this motherboard in some of the 13th gen testing so that's why it doesn't have the peels on but you will have the peels on when you get this so this top slot will come or is connected to the cpu and that's the pci gen 5 and then if you want to get underneath it you have to do or undo a few of the screws this screw over there so we're going to undo that and then there's another screw just underneath there next to that second dim slot and once you've done that the whole card comes out from this slot and you can take it out so there's kind of like a like an angled m.2 connection to the motherboard there as you can see it's not quite m.2 connector but with some kind of like a converter basically that will put it vertically rather than horizontally or the other way around and then underneath this heatsink we have another thermal pad for another m.2 slot that you can or m.2 drive that you can put underneath there and that is gen 4 speed very interestingly though, if you connect a PCIe Gen 5 GPU there, which we don't have out yet, then what happens is that instead of the top slot going directly to the CPU, it actually comes through the chipset to the CPU to get PCIe 5 bandwidth, which is just interesting quirk there. But as you can see on this little panel there, there's a few more extra things. There's another 12 volt RGB header and then a 5 volt RGB nether header underneath there. And the M.2s are toolless designs. So if you want to just secure it, just move this and there we go. There's no need to take anything of this off because there's nothing underneath, but there is a little heating underneath there as well to cool the chipset. As you can see underneath there, this is the chipset um, heating underneath. And you're thinking, flipping heck, how's all of this gonna get you know distributed the heat actually there's two fans on this motherboard believe it or not as well as you can see underneath there there's another fan there that takes in air from the back of the io of the motherboard and then pushes it towards this heating there so inside the case there as you can see so there's tiny tiny little fan will go there and then the fan is plugged in over there as you can see and there is actually another fan just over there as you can see that blows directly to the vrm heat sinks uh, of the motherboard there as well so it will take air from there and then actively calls the vrms as well which is very impressive to pack that many features into an itx board uh, i didn't mention but this is a x16 slot of pcia gen 5 so the future graphics cards can be plugged in here no problem behind the motherboard there is no slots nothing going on over there no covers Nothing of that sort. But let's have a look at the I.O. of the motherboard. We have a clear CMOS button on the bottom corner over here. You can see this is the grill for the fan intake. And then also another one of these exhaust actually because the, the air will come in from there and the fan will blow it down and some of it will come out from the sides or from the you know back of the PC in there. We have some very fast USB ports. We have one, two, three, 10 gigabit USB type A ports. We have one 20 gigabit USB-C port. So this here is USB 3.2 Gen 2 X2 slot. Then we have two Thunderbolt ports here, USB-C ports. One 5 gigabit USB A port. One 2.5 gigabit LAN port and then we have two USB type A ports there for your keyboard and mice and something like that. There's also Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.2 antennas in there but if you want to connect the Hive through this cable in here as you can see type A port that will have to come in here as you can see that tiny little sign in there 
it's only working with this part there. So make sure that you do plug this hive into this part when you're using this. Let's have a look at this hive in detail as well, because it's, it's quite an interesting thing. And I think it's going to go very, very helpful for people who have, um, you know, SFF PCs um, because it packs a lot of features. Basically, we have a BIOS flashback button over there. So if you want to update your BIOS on that motherboard, all you have to do is plug in your USB stick on the side over there, press that BIOS button, boom, your PC starts updating the BIOS literally that's how simple that is you do need to like rename your bios correctly as well like what asus will tell you in the bios you know updating instructions but that's basically that we have an ai overclock button over there so you can switch it on or off there the changes will be applied in the next boot and then we have four leds over there and that's actually very very helpful these are q leds so basically little arrow codes to go through the booting process so the first one will be red, then orange, then uh, white, and then green. So first one will be CPU, RAM, VGA, and then boot. So when you're doing your first boot, usually in the small form factor case, you can't actually see your motherboard and the LEDs in there because it's packed somewhere inside the case. Cables are most likely over it and there's even no QLEDs. But to have this on the table, you can easily see where you know your issue will be on the motherboard. Is it your GPU? Is it the dim sticks that aren't you know correctly installed and so on? Then we have a flex key over there, which is very interesting as well. Uh, so on default, this is system reboot basically. So if you're you know, computer crashes, you can boom, reboot this, which sometimes you don't have that option on an SFF case, but this can be configured to do a few different things. You can have it to um, like change the aura on and off. So like LEDs, you can have them on and off the RGB in your case or on your system, which is quite cool. You know, you're going to sleep, you can just switch the LEDs off. Very nice, you know, wake up, put the LEDs back on again, which can be very helpful for people who sleep in the same room as their PC. I think this is very nice button there. You can also set it to safe boot as well if you want. Then we've got this volume knob in there and all of this feels very, very solid and very nice kind of, you know, quality product to be honest. And I like that. If you want to change the volume up quickly, up and down, you have maybe a 60% keyboard and you don't have shortcuts for the, you know, volume up and down. It's very, very helpful. So to look around on the device there, we have one USB 2.0 um, type A port there for BIOS flashback or your keyboard mouse or something like that. Or if you're running one of the MX Master, you know, devices, you can have a Unibolt, uh, you know, kind of receiver there and then that will connect to both of them unless you want to use Bluetooth, you can do that as well. But then we have one USB type C port there, extra port, and that's 10 gigabits in speed. Moving around, this is where you would connect the other side of the you know hive cable that comes from the motherboard to here there it will go inside this part then we have a microphone part and headphone part over here which is very nice to have in here as well so you don't have to plug your headphones or something like that in the back of the pc you have everything very very close in hand on um, your desk. Now then, I think this motherboard is like 90% perfect, but there's one thing that it's missing and I don't understand why are none of the ITX motherboards out there that have this feature, which is 10 gigabit ethernet. I mean, I'm sure you guys who build SFF BCs would agree with me that why can't we have a 10 gigabit ethernet port in there? Because if we did, I'd pretty much just retire ATX and mid towers because as creators, if you want to connect to your NAS or something like that, you can just do it by connecting your NAS in the back of the PC. That's it, 10 gigabit connection. You'll be all right connecting to it. I know you could probably get some kind of converters through USB-C or Thunderbolt or something like that, but that's not like ideal. I'd love to see this inside an ITX board because the Z790 has plenty of, you know, kind of IO ports possible. We could easily put a 10 gigabit port over there. I don't know why it's not there. Asus, please, can we have a motherboard, ITX motherboard that has 10 gigabit port in the back of the motherboard? And that's about it. Other than that, I think this motherboard is absolutely uh, balls to the wall, like it is. The price is expensive, but it is the best you can get out there for, you know, you got two and the two slots, both of them Gen 4, Gen 5 speeds. You got plenty of connectivity, Thunderbolt ports, so if you want to expand to something else, you can completely do that. All creators who need Thunderbolt uh, connectivity for your monitors, 
for your external audio devices or sound cards or whatever you need the Thunderbolt ports we've got two of them in the back there they are Thunderbolt 4 by the way one HDMI port as well did I forget to mention that for the iGPU if you want to do that so if you're interested in this or if you'd like to see a build compared with some of the you know hardware then let me know which build would you like to see with this motherboard in the comments section below but if you do want to build yourself a best bang for buck pc then check out the links in the description below there's a four part best bang for buck video series where you can build yourself the best bang for buck pc from budgets of 750 dollars all the way to four thousand dollars so feel free to check that out in the description below you can configure it to fit your budgets and all sorts check it out in the description below but in the meantime, likes and so then, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.